tonight, we are expectant that your fire will fall down. Amen. We are expectant that your power will come upon us. Amen. Father, as we look into this area now of our ministry, during this uh, weekend, we pray that we will not be disappointed. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Once again, I'd like to acknowledge all our friends, all our visitors who are coming uh, with us for this program. We truly, truly appreciate the sacrifice that you are taking to be part of this program. And we are asking and pleading uh, to the God of heaven that he will surprise you. Amen. That the Lord will bless you. Amen. That your coming will be rewarded even in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. And that even here on earth, you will realize the blessing of coming to the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to move quickly to uh, the message that we have tonight before we, uh, Father and the Lord, will be ministering to uh, the church in the U.S. And we don't want uh, to miss out of that. So right now we are looking at the prayer and power for the abundant life. First Kings chapter 18 is where I'm reading from. First King, the very first book of the Kings. Actually, sometimes they call it the fourth or the third book because of first and second Samuel. But first Kings, as the scripture uh, titled it, first Kings 18, I'm reading from the 41st verse. First Kings 18, verse 41. And, I, and Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink. For there is a sand of abundance of rain. Amen. There is a sand of abundance of rain. Amen. That statement gives us the interface between prayer and power. This is the convergence of the exercise of praying and the power of God. At work. However, as we look at prayer and the power, it is anchored by faith. Amen. Amen. It is anchored by faith. Amen. The man who was speaking here, who was telling the whole nation, was speaking by faith. Because for three and a half years, there had been no rain in the land. And here is a man who is declaring that the end has come to the time of famine. Amen. That the end has come to the time of drought. Amen. That there is going to be abundance Amen. in the land. Amen. And I speak to you tonight, in any area of drought or famine, abundance is coming to you. Amen. The God of heaven is visiting you tonight. Amen. It will bring abundance into your life in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, for us as a church, we titled this year, what's the title of this year for us St. Paul people? The year of breakthrough. I know you are thinking about the theme of the convention. Praise God. But as you look at our bulletin, it's a year of great vision, a year of breakthrough, a year of the Lord coming through for us. Of course, I've seen the Lord coming through for us. Amen. I said I've seen the Lord coming through for us. Amen. And so I know there is abundance coming. Amen. So that whatever breakthrough we've realized and we've experienced this year, God is going to come to us in a greater way in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever blessings you have received since the beginning of the year, July is coming to an end. As you step into August, you are stopping into greater abundance. Amen. You are entering into a season of abundance. Amen. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Elijah said unto Ahab, you know, when the rain of God comes, it's by mercy, not by merit. Can you say Ahab merits rain? No. Can you say Israel merits rain? No. They had gone away from the Lord. Let me give you context for that. As you look at the exercise 
what happened between Elijah and the people of Israel. In verse 21, and Elijah came unto all the people and he said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Disobedience stopped their mouth. Disobedience closed their mouth. They had no answer for God. When you look at a disobedient man like Ahab, when you look at a disobedient nation like Israel, definitely you will say they don't merit the rain, but God is merciful. He gives us all things to enjoy, not because we merit it, but by his mercy. I am believing God tonight. Whatever may have been standing in your way, by the mercy of God, abundance will get to you. Amen. By the mercy of God, it will rain upon your land. Amen. It will rain in your career. Amen. It will rain in your family. Amen. It will rain in our local churches. Amen. And every one of us will be drenched in the abundance of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I have no doubt that the Almighty God is setting us up for greater glory. Amen. For Israel, as they look at what Elijah said here, it can be very difficult to kind of have faith to believe it. Because these were people that were under judgment. And they knew that it was their sin that brought the judgment. But the man of God said, Mercy triumphs over judgment. Whatever it is that has come into our lives as individuals, in our families, the mercy of God will triumph over any judgment in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord will visit us and give us rain in this latter time in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as we look at this message tonight, we are looking at God of mercy showing up at an unexpected time. Nobody was expecting Elijah when he came. He was at the prompting of God. So what you are not expecting tonight, at the prompting of God, it will get to you. Amen. And by faith in Christ, it will get to you. Amen. What Christ has bought and purchased on the cross of Calvary, I am asking God and pleading tonight that God will release them into your life in Jesus' name. Amen. The seed that God has sown into your life, it will be water. Amen. God will nourish it. I said God will nourish you. Amen. And then you begin to bring forth in thousands in Jesus' name. Amen. And so Israel didn't merit it, and we don't. But praise God for the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we are reconciled. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, as a result of the favor and the mercy of God, we receive what we don't merit, what we don't deserve, God gives them to us, you know, just freely. It's a free gift. Blessings of heaven. Second Peter 1, in verse 3, it says, according as his divine power. Everybody say divine power. Divine That's power. what we are looking onto tonight. The divine power of God, the divine order of God, the divine orchestration from heaven. It will give you breakthrough tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, the divine power of God has given. It's not that he is going to give. He has what? He has given. There are things given to you that you don't even know already. It has not been revealed to you already. But tonight, by the mercy of God, it will be revealed. Amen. By the mercy of God, it will direct you to it. Amen. According as his divine power has given unto us, all things. Everybody say all things. All See that gift gives me the assurance that whatever it is you are asking, by faith tonight, God will give it to you. Amen. This is a God that has power to do all things. And he says, he has given unto you all things that pertain unto, number one, this life. So, we are not asking just for something we will see later. Praise God. Amen. But what you are going to see tonight. Amen. What you are going to enjoy tomorrow. Amen. What you are going to enjoy next year. Amen. What are you going to enjoy two years time? Amen. Five years time? Amen. 
10 years time, for the rest of your life, God will do it tonight. According to his divine power, he will release you tonight in Jesus' name. He will release you to blessing. It will release you to abundance. It will release you to breakthrough. The Lord will bring you into a place where you will not be afraid. In the name of Jesus. He says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life. That's number one. Number two. Unto what? Godliness. Amen. There are things that the human, human nature cannot get to. There are things that as a human being we can't attain to. But the divine power of God will give us that breakthrough when we get there in Jesus' name. Yeah. As long as we get there in Jesus' name, yeah. God will accelerate us into that portion, into that realm where we ought to be in Jesus' name. Yeah. And it says through the knowledge of him that has called us. It is only through the knowledge of Christ. It is only through the power of Christ who has called us to glory and virtue. God has not called you to shame. There will be no shame in your life. There will be no shame in your family. He has called you to glory and virtue. Let's not call you to shame and ruin. That's not the purpose of God. Every shame and ruin, God will wipe them away in Jesus' name. Everything that stands in the way of the people of God, God will roll them away in Jesus' name. The power of God will speak into your life. The grace of God will speak into your life. And there will be breakthrough for you this year in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we go back again to that uh, First Kings. First Kings chapter 18. Look at what the man said there. He says, there is a sound. Can you hear the sound? Yes, I said, can you hear the sound? Yes. A sound. The sound is in the spiritual realm. The sound is not in the physical the sun is not something, you know, that is available to everyone. But the sun of the abundance is coming to you. Amen. I said it's coming to you. Amen. I said it's coming to you. Amen. And the Lord will bring you even to the realization of that sun in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we see very clearly by the grace of God that this man of God has seen the blessing before it came. God has given him the grace to understand that something great was going to happen even before, you know, it happened. He says there is a sound of abundance of rain. Tonight, abundance of rain. Amen. Three things very quickly because of our time. Number one, the prayer of faith for the abundant life. The prayer of faith for the abundant life. Number two, our proclamation of fullness. In his abiding law. Our proclamation of fullness in his abiding law. Number three, the power of faith for the abundant life. The power of faith for the abundant life. It will come to you. Amen. By faith, you will get what is impossible tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. So number one is the prayer of faith for the abundant life. Now you look at... Uh, Look at what uh, this man said there. In that chapter 18, verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sign of the abundance of rain. That's the prayer. That's, you know, the prayer that the man prayed is a very short, quick, and straightforward. He just declared it as God has given him the grace. If you back up, you will see the prayer that he prayed. In, in verse 26 of chapter 18, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart back again. Praise God. Amen. Very simple, very direct, very specific. Amen? Amen? Very specific. There are specific things that he wanted to do. And he was looking that God will do. So as you look at the kind of prayer we are talking about tonight. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. I mean, you pray by faith and you believe that God is going to answer. Before this man got here, he already had the stamp of heaven upon his life. Amen? Amen. 
That's what makes the prayer short and sweet. It's not a rambling prayer. It's not a, a prayer of thinking and meditating. What should I say? No. It's already there by the Spirit of God. This is what God wants to achieve. And that's what God achieved. Amen. Amen. As you bring your prayers tonight, whatever it is that the, the Spirit of God will inspire you to do, you will achieve it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is not a time to be rambling, to be rambling, to be rambling. No. It's a time to believe God for greater things. Greater things are coming to you. Amen. I said greater things are coming to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And so he prayed a prayer, you know, that is very short, direct, and, you know, to the point. And this is a very unusual prayer for an unusual time. Amen. Amen. There, has, there has not been rain for three and a half years. And the man was praying a very unusual prayer. I am praying that as you bring your own unusual prayer tonight, the heavens will open up. Amen. I said heavens will open up. Amen. And the heavens will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. Unusual prayer. I see a man who prayed that kind of prayer. In scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel 12, it's in verse 17. It's the man Samuel. Unusual prayer. You know, you pray at a time where, you know, you're not praying because you know it's a rainy season and you say, let it rain. No. You are praying at a time where it's almost impossible it can happen. You pray and God answer. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 12. Look at it with me in uh, verse 17. First Samuel 12. You know, it was a time when uh, Samuel presented himself. Israel said, we want a king. We want a ruler. We want somebody to lead us. He said, okay, go ahead. We want somebody to lead you. And so, he was, you know, he thrust unto them Saul, uh, Saul, the first king. But now he was trying to win himself off the national stage. But before he did that, he wanted to show them where they have gone wrong. And so he presented before, before them himself. In verse 3, even of that same chapter 12, he says, Behold, here am I, witness against me before the Lord, and before his anointed, whose ox have I taken? Whose ass have I taken? Whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bread to blind my eyes therewith? And I will restore it to you. Praise the Lord. He says, I will restore it to you. Tonight, there will be restoration. Amen. The man said, if I have taken anything, I will restore. But look at their answer. And they said, thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us. That's the kind of man that can pray. And the answer will come. Amen. That was the Samuel of those days. You will be that Samuel. Amen. I said, you will be that Samuel. Amen. And he said unto them, the Lord is witness against you, verse 5, and is anointed. He's witness this day that ye have not found aught in my hand. And the answer, he is witness. You know, there was nothing they could find in his life. But by the grace of God, when he prayed, when he prayed concerning them, God answered. I said, God answered. As you pray tonight, the Lord will answer you. Amen. Look at verse 17. In fact, verse 16 says, Now therefore stand and see this great thing, which the Lord will do before your eyes. God will do great things before your eyes. Amen. And then he goes on in verse 17. Is it not wheat harvest today? It's not a time for rain. It's harvest time, it doesn't rain there. But I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send down thunder and what? And rain, that ye may perceive and see that your wickedness is great. Of course, it's not about their wickedness we are all thinking about, but the power of God that works in the prayer of, of this man of God. You know, if you are a man that is of integrity, that has nothing that the enemy can hold to you, by the grace of God, God will answer your prayer in Jesus' name. I said, God, we answer your prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. What kind of prayer can we pray, brethren? Prayer for rain. As Elijah prayed, that God will send the rain. Amen. I said, that God will send the rain. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, if I shut off heaven and there is no rain, or I command locusts to devour the land, and I send pestilence among my people, then he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. When we come in humility and we pray, God will answer. I said, God, we answer. Amen. And tonight, God, we answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. What kind of rain, uh, prayer can we pray? We can pray that God will give us rest. Amen. Amen. We can say, Lord, we need rest. And God will give you rest. Amen. God will grant us rest. You know, in Ruth chapter 1, verse 9, you know, uh, Naomi prayed a prayer that she didn't even know how God was going to answer it. He said, Lord, grant you. She was praying for Ruth and for Opa. He said, the Lord grant you that ye may find rest each of you in the house of her husband. You see that she was praying that prayer. Was that prayer answered? Yes. yes. But there was no husband there. There was no hope of a husband. 
Actually, Naomi was going back to Bethlehem, Judah. And she was asking Naomi and uh, uh, she was asking Ruth and Opa, uh, and Opa to, to stay back. But she was praying that God would give them rest. At least we had of Ruth that she had rest. We had of Ruth that she did great things. That God did great things through her. That prayer of God concerning you will be answered. Yeah. The prayers we've been praying here all through the week concerning you will be answered. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. God will answer our prayer concerning you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Prayer of restoration. That God will restore all that the enemy has taken away. God will answer us. Yeah. I said God will answer us. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let me go to the second point because we are getting ready for our Father. And I don't want you to miss it. Praise God. I said we are getting ready for our Father. I don't want you to miss our proclamation. Our proclamation. What should we proclaim? When God says there is rain, what should we do? We we'll say there is. That's your proclamation. Don't contradict God. Don't contradict. Elijah said there will be abundance of rain. I'm sure if you ask Ahab, he probably will say, don't mind Elijah. Yes, he can look down on Elijah, but Elijah is still bringing the rain. I said Elijah is bringing the rain. It doesn't matter how people look down on you now. The rain is coming upon your life. Amen. Tonight the rain is coming upon your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In Isaiah 48 verse 6. He says. Thou hast heard. See all this. Will not ye declare it. Start telling people about the goodness of God. Start telling people this is what God is going to do. Proclaim it. Stop saying something bad about yourself. In as much as you stay within the will of God. Say something good is happening to me. Miracle is coming to me. God is doing wonders in my life. My children will do well. My family will do well. Our church is a good place. Our ministers are wonderful. God is doing wonders in our life. Stop proclaiming the wrong thing. Believe the report of God concerning you. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Everyone has challenges here and there. But that's not what God wants you to focus on. Focus on God. Amen. I said focus on God. Amen. As you first talk on God, God will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. You have heard what God is doing, what he has done, and what we say God will do. Believe us, he will do it. Amen. You know, because Ahab went home. But before they got to the city, the rain came. Amen. Before you get home tonight, Amen. you are going to see the rain. Amen. I said before you go to sleep tonight, the rain is coming in Jesus' name. Amen. The rain of abundance. Amen. The rain of joy. Amen. The reign of peace, the reign of gladness, in the name of Jesus. You know, between the minister and the members, there has to be an agreement. That what we say is going to be like that. Praise the Lord. Between the preachers and the people, there has to be an agreement. That what we say is so. The Lord God of my, of my pastor says so, and it is so. The Lord my God says so, and it is so. There has to be an agreement. If you don't proclaim it, it's like you are doubting God. We will not doubt God. Amen. The pulpit and the pew must agree. That's the agreement that we need. And God will give it to us in Jesus' name. Amen. I said God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. It is our proclamation. Our proclamation. You know what Jesus said in John 11, 39? He said, take ye away the stone. Martha said, hmm, he's mistaken for about four days. Jesus said, just take away the stone. That's, that's the instruction. Amen? Amen. The instruction tonight is, believe God. Amen. Believe his prophet. Amen. You will prosper. Amen. You will be established. Amen. Nothing will stand in your way. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. The proclamation of the fullness. Elijah said, there is going to be abundance of rain. Say, I've had the sound already. I've had the sound already. Did you hear the sound? Yeah. Can you hear what the, what the season is saying? Yeah. Abundant season, yeah. abundant joy, yeah. abundant faith, yeah. abundance in your family, yeah. abundance in your career, yeah. abundance everywhere. Yeah. That's what God will give you. Your spirit, you will be buoyant. Yeah. You will be nourished in the grace and the power of God in Jesus' name. Yeah. That's your proclamation. So that you agree, I agree, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Yeah. As we come to that agreement, God will honor our agreement in yeah. Jesus' name. Now, number three now. Number three is the power of faith for the abundant life. Praise God. Amen. The power of faith. The power of faith. The, the Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able. Our God is able. Amen. Now 
unto him. The power of faith here is not rested in your ability. Say that again. The power of my faith is not rested in my ability. Let's say it again. The power of my faith is not rested in my ability, but in the ability of my God. A glorious God. A wonderful God. A great God. Who is able to do all things. That God is alive. I said that God is alive. He will do wonders in your life in Jesus' name. If I like to say that the wonder has begun. I said the wonder has begun. I said the wonder has begun. So number one, God is able. Number two, I am able. My God is able. And I am able. Also, can I tell you, God also is going to bring godly instruments to accomplish his purpose. Do you believe that? God will do it. God will use his ministers. God will use other instruments to be able to help you. He says, God is able. Look at it. 2 Corinthians 9 8, 9 8. And God is able to make all grace abound unto you that ye always have a sufficiency in all things. Abound to every good work. Amen. Amen. You will abound to every good work. Amen. Rise up and let us pray. Rise up now. Rise up, rise up, rise up. The hour has come. The hour of blessing has come. The hour of favor has come. The hour of glory has come. The hour of grace has come. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Open your mind and be ready now that God will flow into you. That grace will flow into you. That joy will flow into you. Say, Lord, let there be rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. I am ready for the rain. I'm ready for the rain. Open your mouth. Open your mouth now. And get ready for the rain. Get ready for the rain. The rain is coming out. It's going to be pouring very soon. It's going to be pouring very soon. Make a proclamation. Proclaim and declare that God will do wonders in your life. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, the Lord is ready, the Lord is ready. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you ready for blessing? I said, are you ready for blessing? The blessing is coming out. I said, the blessing is coming out. Say, heavens, heavens, pour your blessing upon me now. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Let the blessing begin. We are going to connect directly to our Father in the Lord now so that the stream of blessing is not cut off. The stream of blessing continues. Upstairs, give it to us, give it to us now. Hallelujah. Decisions that will turn your life around. Yes. Amen. 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 It will happen. Amen. You are made to thrive. Amen. You will thrive in Jesus' name. Amen. Things are going to be different. Amen. In your life, in your family. Amen. Not what you expected, beyond what you expected. Amen. The Lord will make it happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight we are going to go back to John chapter 10 verse 10. By this time now, you're familiar with John chapter 10 verse 10. But there's something here. You see, when we read the scriptures, I'm not preaching yet, just uh, you know, preparing your mind. We need to understand what the scripture says. We don't make the scripture say what we're wanting to say and then pray on that. Because you understand, if we pray on what we think the scripture is saying, the prayer is not answered. Because God is not going to go by your interpretation or by my interpretation and then answer prayer. God is going to go by his own interpretation. What did I intend when I gave that? And what did I want the people to understand? If you understand what he has said, and you pray on the basis of what he has said, then he will answer. And prayer is very simple. Getting answers to prayer, very simple. Amen. If you take a letter that is written to me, and you read that letter, 
And the person who wrote that thing to me promised me some things. Then you stand on that and you go to that person and say, you told me you are going to do this. And he looks at you and says, what's your name? Then you mention your name. He said, look at the back of that letter. I wrote it to so and so. And I gave him this promise. And you are coming to claim the promise. By the way, you shouldn't have opened the letter that wasn't written to you. And so we need to understand when Jesus speaks, he speaks to some people. And those people have the right to come and claim 